Hi guys. Right. I've been asked by a few people on our beginners wood turning group, link as always below, how I get this effect on the side of my bowls. Now this is using colours and um, iridescent paint from Joe Sonia. So what I'm going to do, not all turn a video, I'm just going to do a bit of a demonstration on our, how I managed to get this effect. Others also do this on YouTube, um, to name two, Stuart Fiorini, uh, Wayne Wood Turner, links to their channels are below as well, if you want to check their channels out, they've been doing this a lot longer than me, but I'm just going to do this quick little video just to show you how I get this effect. Enjoy the video. prepared this blank this is a um, I think this is about about 10 inches it's, um, it's a lump of lime um, so we've gone and we've got a bowl shape we've got a um, um, mortise on the back just to mount it in the chalk and on this side as well we've now got a we've got a tenon and, and a mortise however you want to mount this it's just in case this needs to be mounted back into the chalk um, from the inside of the bowl um, just in case you need to we need to do anything else on the back very often when you're painting you can get a bit carried away and you can get paint on this side so you might need to re, um, rework this side of the bowl I've, um, as you see this one's all covered up with masking tape so we should be okay but um, you just never know so it's just a good idea to do that I've also you see this, used my parting tool just to put in a little a little recess here this this is where I think the edges of the bowl um, well the start of the inside of the bowl is going to be and then this is the area that I'm going to colour so um, just to give me a guide when I'm, when I'm colouring it. We spray painted it, um, well first of all we sanded it down to, I think both sides were sanded down to, well I think it was 320, I think it was too mad on, um, on sanding um, and this side's been sanded, well this edge has been sanded to 320, it's had a, um, a very light coat of sanding sealer and then it's been covered with the um, ebonising black ebonizing lacquer from Chestnut Products. Um, which, when we put the colours on, as you'll see, will really help the colours stand out, um, rather than putting it against the bare, the bare wood. So, um, yeah, let's take it over to the um, till aid and we'll start looking at some of the colours. Right, what we're going to be using, we're going to be using these, Joe Sonia, iridescent paints, and we're, also, we're going to also be using some of the um, Joe Sonia white acrylic as well. So, what I've got, We've got to start, we've got two different types of brushes we're going to use. I call it, I don't know, I'm not an artist, but this is my, it's like a tulip shaped brush. And we're going to use a flat brush as well for this. Now, what I have, these are really interesting um, paints because what happens is that when you put these on, they are white. Um, they don't actually develop the colour until they start to cure. So you put them all on and they're all white. So what I have, what I tend to use, I have this. You see this? It's just just a scrap piece of wood, and I've got the colours already worked on here. So green, blue, violet, red, gold, turquoise, and a big blob of white here. It just means that if I keep putting the colours in the right area, I know which colour they are because they, once they're all on here, they're all going to look white. So um, it's just a just a simple way of telling them apart. So so what we're going to do, we are going to put um, some white on first. So. I've mounted the blank onto the lathe, so let's um, let's get started. We like this type of lathe work because I can actually sit down for it. What I'm going to do first, we're going to put some white on here. Eventually, what you're going to see, you're not going to see any of this black. These colours, I feel and I find, tend to stand out against a black background. If you put it onto the bare wood, I just don't think you get the kind of effect. So what I do, paint it black, but you're not going to see this. But what you are going to see. What we're going to put on first, we're going to put some of the white acrylic paints on. Now, when you put the iridescent paints on top of the acrylic, it does cover them, and you will get colours come through, but even right at the end, you will still see some of this white acrylic paint, I found, um, especially on maybe this light wood, might just be the shade of the wood that causes it, but you will still, still see some of the white coming through. Let me just get me other piece, and I will show you exactly what I mean. Right, if you look at this one, you can still see clear areas, I hope you can anyway, on here which are white. Now, none of these paints are white, so this white can only be coming from the um, acrylic paint that we put on in the beginning. So, that over there. Now I'm going to add this, 
Um, I mean, the, as you can tell, the whole idea is to make this look like a, I don't know, like a, a meadow, a summer, summer, summer meadow. Um, so lots of colours and um, lots of texture and lots of depth to this. So what I'm going to do, we're going to put on the white first. Now, I'm going to use a piece of kitchen towel. Now, I, I learned this message from, um, a message? I learned this, learned this technique from um, Shirt Farini. So, and it works really well with this. So I've just got a bit of kitchen towel and I fo folded this over maybe maybe four times. Just so you got a, a bit of a kind of horseshoe thing going on there. And I've also put some white on my um, on my board and we're just gonna tap the end into the white. Now the first thing I wanna do, because you don't want this going on, this, this wants to be quite even all the way around this. You don't want any areas where you've got too much white. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because all this is gonna be turned away, remember, we've just got a bit of a practice on here. Just have a look at the shape now. Straight away, I can see that's going to be a bit blotchy, so, so that's better. You see that? That kind of thing is better. You just want a light, a light effect. So, right, I've got the stamp I need, so we're going to put a bit more, a bit more on there. Just, you know, just start it off, just to get rid of the excess, which the first, which the first couple of um, touches will give you. Then we start at the top. So, if I just, just gently start at the top, just. What we're going to do, we're going to put this on randomly. It wants to be right on the edge, but we still want to see some black. We don't want, we're not covering it up, and we don't want to. We don't want any areas where there's where there's excess. I'm just going to start tapping on this side's blank. We we'll probably get maybe a third of the way around before we need to put any more paint on. But so we're running a little bit low now, so it wants to be quite even. We'll just maybe press a little bit harder, and there you go. It's coming through again now. So just getting a bit of a random kind of pattern, and like, like I say, this remember will will come through, and it will it will you will see this white or a bit of it um, on on the finished bowl. So you, if you get too much in one area, it's not the end of the world, but if you get too much in one area, then it, it then it will show. So just gonna be just gentle. We get actually we get nearly all the way around with us, so this is good. On there. Now what I'm going to, what we will normally do, the, I, I, the certain, I, I do let some of this dry before I put the next coat on, um, and I would do that normally with a white. So what we, what I'm going to do, we could force it, it would just be a hot air gun, but I like to, these paints don't have to tell them to dry anyway. So so now we've got, I'll just maybe a bit more there. Kind of you want it right up to the rim, right up to the edge. That looks okay, maybe a bit more there. Let's see. Less is more, but I don't know. But what you don't want is any areas where you've got blatantly lots more on uh, of, of, of the wire because it will show through. But that looks fairly even. So, okay, we're going to leave it like that and um, let that dry. I'm going to let that dry naturally. When I put the um, iridescent paints on, I don't tend to let them dry. Um, well, sometimes I do, but I don't tend to let them dry between coats, so just go straight on to the next colour, so just so the, the, the paint's all merging together. So uh, we're going to let that dry, and I'll come back to you in a few minutes. Right, we are back. Right, what we're going to do, right, this is all dry now, so so the white's dried on top of the black. Right, like I said, all, these colours are actually all white, so it's very difficult sometimes to see where you've been. So I've got a temporary black marker, and obviously on the masking tape, I'm just going to put a line at the back. There you go, so you can't see this, but there's now a black line at the back. So as I work around with the colour, as soon as I see the black line come back, I know I'm back with where I started. Could put one there as well, it doesn't matter. This is going to get turned away, so let's put one there as well so you can see what I'm doing. Right, get rid of that. Right, first colour we are going to use on this, and it's completely random, you can do it exactly what you want to do. It's completely make it up. Yeah. So you've got my palette, I'm going to use gold. Now, let me put this on here, I'll just put a little bit on, can you see this? Now you might be able to see a bit of gold, because you can see the previous paint from last time I did it, but that's actually fairly white, so it won't look gold until it starts to dry, so that's that on there. Tidy myself up. Now, the reason I use gold is because the next colour I'm going to use is blue, and 
blue on the white will look very blue, but blue on the gold will actually turn a bit of a green. So you'll see that you actually can put one colour on and get a couple of colours out of it. It's just how it's um, how it's going to react with the different colours. Um, so anyway, right, let's start off with putting the gold. So right, we've got a centre mark, so we know where we are. Now the plan is, we're going to randomly put this on. We're going to cover some of the white and some of the black, but we don't have to cover everything because there's, there's all the colours to go on first. I've got my tulip shaped I'm sure there's a proper name for that, but it's a tulip shaped brush. And what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to just going to be doing, can you see this? Just down my strokes like this. Just start off with. So it's just going to be random. So same stroke all the way around, just to, so we keep getting the same effect. So, right, let's put some on the brush. Now, again, if, you, if you're a bit unsure, have a bit of a practice here. You see how that is so white? Put it against the white, you can see, so it's quite difficult. Hopefully you can see that, so it's actually quite difficult to sew when the colour's on, so that's why I've got these marks, so right, let's start putting some of the gold on. Now straight away you can see the difference here between the gold, as it hits the black, it looks gold, but as it hits the white, it's, you can see it, it still looks white, so, so we'll put random on. Put it on, put it on random, but we're not aiming to cover anything up because there's a lot of colours to go on here yet, so, but all the same type of stroke. All the way around. There you go. So just put it on randomly. However you want it to go on, it can go on any, any way you like. Just remember not to maybe concentrate it too much in one area at this at this point. It's um, and I say you eventually you won't see any of this black. I'm just going to randomly put this on. A bit too much, it don't matter. But keep all the strokes the same. Think of this as a I don't know, there's like a field of sort of tulips shaped flowers is kind of the effect you're going for. So there you go, we're just going to work all the way around. This is probably going to... Probably best put this in fast forward, so um, let's put this in fast forward and I'll, um, I'll catch you when it's done. There you go. See there, you can't... It doesn't even look gold. It'll go gold. There you go. Against the black, it goes gold. This this area here is just a uh, that, that, little bit too much white on. So, so that's what I say. You just don't want to concentrate that white too much. So you can see, just a little bit of a patch here. It'll be okay. We, 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 we won't really see that in the end. But it did just stand out to the minute. But um, it'll be okay. Right. So that's that's the gold on. So what we're going to do? I'm just going to take a piece of um, tissue and I'm just going to wipe the brush. We're not going to clean it. There's no need to clean it. Right, now we are going to go straight into the blue. I'm not going to let this dry, we have, we have cleaned the brush. I'm just going to put that, sweep some of that on there, it's a small amount. Right. Let's see there, there's the blue, looking very white. You can see why you put your mark on now. So now when you put the blue on, on the white and then on the black, it's going to look blue. But on the gold, it will start to look a little bit green as it dries. So you're going to get two colours out of this, which is why I go for the gold first. So, so exactly the same again. Let's have a little practice. See how that's going. Colours coming out of that straight away. Right. So find your mark, and and you're putting wet on wet. It doesn't matter. Let's just there you go. Let's just aim. Just just do exactly the same random random marks. So there's no rule to this. You just, all I like to do, and it's it's all it's here, is not be able to see the black afterwards. The black's purely there to um, help these colours stand out, which I think it works really well. So, up near the top, put some on top, and just putting the lightest of strokes on. I'm just going to work my way around again there. There you go. Again, the same, exactly the same type of stroke. Exactly the same type of stroke. I do love doing this. Sometimes this is, this 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 is as enjoyable for me doing this as it is actually turning the wood in the first place. So just doing something different. It's just a boring piece of lime, and it's nothing, nothing really special about the wood. It's a nice wood to turn, but nothing really special about the wood. You're making it special now, so give it a bit of character. 
you can see that where I've been down here, you see this is already changing colour. So you're getting the more I don't know how much this the camera's picking up on this, but you're getting some blues and you are also getting a little bit of green come out against the gold. You won't see any you probably won't see any of the gold by the time we finish with all the colours, but um it's having its effect as a background as a background colour, so I'll turn it onto the edge. Don't be scared of going on the edge, we've got the masking tape on, so it's so easy, so easy to forget where you won't be able to see where you've been. So, right, just don't see that about. So, you still see some of the black, so we will cover it all up, but not yet. Not yet. Save some of the black to um, so we can highlight the other colours. Don't forget to take it right down to the room. This is this is going to be the um, this is going to be the edge. That's why I turn that little recess in with a parting tool just so we can see the we can see the edge. So it's wasting any 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 paint. Quite a big quite a big bowl, so we don't want to waste any paint on it. You can see where it's going green, it just it just Greens it a little bit with the gold. Yeah, it's just yellow in the gold and it just changes the colour of the blue. We might put two or three coats of blue on. Let's see how it goes. You just make this up as you go along. Just make sure you've got fairly even, fairly even coverage. There you go. But it's important to it is important as you go along to, I think, to get rid of the black, but uh, maybe leave it. I mean, it's up to you guys. Just, maybe try it without the white. I mean, this is, um, this is there's no there's no right or wrong way of this at all. Nothing at all. You just do it however you want to do it. Doesn't matter, just, just pick a bit up and move it around a bit. There you go. And we're coming back up, there's your mark. So we know where we've been. Clear the essence of this now, between the black and the. I think just, just, just black, gold, and blue with a bit of white will be, um, would make a nice bowl, but, but we're not going to stop there. We're not going to stop there. Just to me, that's a little bit dark. We need to be lining this up a little bit. So. There you go. Right. So that is now. You see how this white is still coming through. We've coloured this white, but it's still very much coming through. There's a couple of areas where this area, especially where it's um, we've had a bit too much on. Um, you see, it's one of the areas where we first started. That's why I said take a little bit of the paint off first before you start on the rim, and um, so that's a little bit too much. But we can change that. Let's put a bit more blue on here, might it? It just helps to soften it. But it doesn't matter. You, you you won't notice it. Well, you will, but nobody else will. It's just one of them things where you're trying to be as perfect as possible, and um, it's one of those things where nobody else would ever notice any mistakes. But um, but you do. Right. So that's the blue. Right. To clean my brush down. Where's my coffee? Yeah, that'll do. Again, we'll just um, just wipe it off. We're not going to do anything anything else now. Other than switch brushes, what I want to show you is a squeaky chair. Right. What I do now, this will this will never ever be smooth when you've got this um, with a lacquer on or however you choose to finish it. Um, it will never be smooth. But what you can do now, because on that paint you're going to have lots of ridges. So I take this flat brush, brush, completely dry, no paint on it, and just very very lightly. With my hand at the back, let's go up to the. No, where are we? Oh, here's the, here's the marking. I'm just gonna very lightly, very very lightly. You don't want to put any too much pressure on this at all. All you're doing there is blending those colours that you just put. It's very gently, and it's, it's just taking any of the ridges, and it's just it's just adding a blend to it. It's adding a bit of a blend to it. There you go, and you're back up with your mark. 
that'll do. That'll do for now. Just wipe that excess off. This is um, this is this is a clean brush. You don't want we don't want to put um, any paint on that. Right. What to go for now? I think actually we've got the colours. Colours over here. Let's, let's do that. Let's bring the colours a bit closer so I'm not getting off my squeaky chair all the time. What we're going to do is we're going to use some of the violet. Just, now we just need to get it to these. These are these are stronger colours, and it's just going to it's just going to pop with a bit of colour. So just a little bit of violet on my way too much violet on my makeshift palette, but okay. Clean the brush. Well, we just just wiped it. We not washed it. There's no need. I'm just going to put a bit of iron on. So, quick try. See, it's just a kind of strong colour. This is right. So, we're starting exactly the same. Let's just let's put the iron on. You're just laying up these colours. Put it on where you want it to go. So there's no. There's no rules, but what we are going to try and do now, now we've got to the violet, is we're going to try and cover up some of the black. Because this violet really stands out against the black background. So what we're going to do now, we're going to yeah, just concentrate, just random, wherever you want it to go. You don't have to cover it all up, because we've got, we've got, we've got red to come out. So but we're going to cover up some of the black, some of the darker areas now because we're trying to lighten it a little bit just lighten it so I'm probably concentrating a bit more with violet where I want it to go than I did with the others so just move it around okay, you see what I'm doing? I'm going to fast forward and um, I'll see you when it's done so it's quite nice having a quiet workshop no music sometimes. No music, just working like this on the layer. It's, um, like I say, it's very therapeutic. Yeah, it's during lockdown as well, and it's um, it's a nice thing to do. Right. Where are we now? We've still got a bit more to go yet. Again, I'm probably putting more violet on than I would normally, but I'm just trying to cover the bag right up to the edge, right up to the rim. You don't want any difference, but you can't forget the rim. So, if you mask it off properly, then it, will, it should look really well. It should look really good. Right, we're getting there now. We're almost there. You can see these paints are drying as you do. They don't take a lot of drying, and um, as you're doing this, the drying, and you can just keep looking back and see the colours changing. They were, they were stra they're strange old paints, were we? But, but they really do work well. Really love working with these. You can get some amazing effects, absolutely amazing effects. I tend to go over the top by putting on too too many colours on sometimes, but it's just nice to work with. It doesn't matter. It's your bowl. You can do what you like. Let's put a bit on there. There you go. Right. So there you go. Now what we've done. We've covered up a lot of the black now. You still see this area here where we had a bit too much white. But again, let's just overdose that with a little bit of colour. It will help it. It will always be there. I don't think we're going to get rid of that. But it doesn't matter. Like I say you're the only one that's going to, you and me, we're the only people that are going to be able to see this area here because I guarantee nobody else will notice it. So I'll just clean the brush on there. Get a brush of white. Now I'm going to, again with the dry brush, flat bush we're just gonna we're just gonna put some very very light strokes in just to um, smooth the surface because what I'm gonna do now before I put the red on because we've covered a lot of the black I'm gonna let it dry, dry a little bit I think so um oh am I yeah I'm gonna let it dry a little bit there's no reason really for that other than I want the red to be just, just that little bit brighter so if you put it on now it's gonna mix a little bit with the other colours so so what I'm gonna do is just gonna give this a very very gentle brush so I'll just very gently up and you can do up and down if you like but it's um, keeping the same direction same direction then it'll just look a bit more like if these ever do look like flowers or something like that it'll just perhaps give, just give them a little bit of movement in the wind so then we'll go around again let's get this two lines it'll just look like they're moving in a little breeze or something like that I think. 
That's what we're aiming for anyway. And so a few exactly the same strokes all the way around. There you go. Yeah. Clean that off. Now we're gonna let just let that dry. We'll see you in a second. Right. That's now dry. We've got some red on the palette, so I think this is gonna be the last colour as well. Um you can really see a lot of the black's now covered up um, but now it's dry this red hopefully should stand out a little bit more and it won't um, the color shouldn't change too much with um, by, by mixing with the other colors so but exactly the same exactly the same we're going to start here and we're going to add it now this is where we, because this is the last color i think we might put a little bit more blue on there but um, i just want to make sure that we do cover there's a bit a little bit of black on the top here so just, Use it to paint over the blacks. I'm just putting the smallest amounts on. You don't need a lot. You don't need a lot. And um, turn it around and work his way around. So, yeah, a bit of black there. Just get, let's put it on. It's a little bit simple. Simple technique. And I've said this before, it's quite, it is very therapeutic. See. Look how that white still comes through. You put all this colour on, all this paint on top of the white, and any other colours, I think you'd, you'd have lost all the white by now. But you can still see the white. You've covered some, it does, it does cover some, but you can still see the white. That's why you've got to be so careful how much you put on. And um, I just like doing it with the with the kitchen roll. And like I said, that's a Stuart Farina, I got that from Stuart. So got that idea off one of his videos. Um, but it just gives it that nice. Nice texture. Just nice texture as a as a as a base. As a base colour. There you go, I've been talking too much I've lost where I was. There you go. I think we're about there, doesn't it? It doesn't matter. There. A bit more. Almost done. It's meant to be a short video, I don't know how much of this talking and this waffle you're going to be listening to or how much is going to be fast forward. So, yeah, you'll be finding it useful. I'll just try and delete out the scenes of watching paint dry. There you go. Right, we're going to let. Just quickly just touch that up in a, in a few areas where you might. You know what? I might put a bit more on. Put a bit more red on. Just a little bit more. So we're gonna work his way around again with the red. So this one I guess will be on fast forward. And we're back at the mark again. So that is now it. It for the red. Right. Well that is still wet. You can take the dry take the dry brush in and we're just gonna we're just gonna blend it. Just smooth it off. Make it a bit nicer to look at and it'll get make it also make it a bit nice to um to feel when it's um, when it's finished, which I think, does it need some more blue? Shall we try some blue? I'm going to put a little bit of blue on. Right, one more coat of blue. There you go. I think we're done. Right, that is it, guys. I've took you off the tripod and I'm hoping you can see this because it's not always the best thing to pick up in, inside the workshop. There. That's the kind of effect we're looking for. So, what you're going to see next, you're either going to see me stood with the actual bowl all nicely turned out because I won't bother boring you with that, or, or not. It depends on whether I decide to keep it. But looking at that, I think I'm going to keep it. So, um, yeah, put the colours in there now. Let's see, still see, where are we? Still really see the white coming through. And not a lot of the black, so, um, yeah. I think, uh, you can't see that. I think that looks quite nice. And we're done. And as you can see, we've turned the inside out, which means this is a keeper. At the minute, it's only had sand and silver. Um, what this will get now is three or four coats of the um, 
gloss lacquer, probably um, from Hampshire Sheep. Um, then it will go back on the lathe and it will get both grades of Yorkshire grit on it as well, just to just to hopefully give it a bit more of a shine. Um, do the put the lacquer on first, just uh, just so the Yorkshire grit. I'll probably try and um, put a little bit of the Yorkshire grit on the on the colour. If the lacquer should should protect it. Um, so yeah, there you go. You see that? Difficult to get on camera. Definitely the shine. What I will do though is we'll finish it and then we'll put some stills at the end. So um, yeah, stay tuned for the stills. So we're calling it. Well, a bit more, a bit, a bit more purple than I uh, originally intended, but it doesn't matter. Like I say, it's, it's your ball. You do as you like. Um, just play around with the colours. Um, it's quite smooth as well. That um, the technique just with the dry brush really works well. Uh, just just to give us. Give the paint a bit of a smooth surface, and if if you can see here, um, they have blurred in. Oh, I don't know if you can see that. Actually. Oh, that's better. You can see um, you see all the colours. You can still see some of the white, and it has actually blurred some of the colours together a little bit as well. It's um, if if it was based on I don't know flowers kind of moving in the wind. It's just um, just give it it's just giving it a nice effect. So so yes hopefully you like if you like the video please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe always 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 appreciate it if you can subscribe and um feel free to share with your friends and um yeah thanks again for watching stay tuned for some stills at the end of the um, end of the video and um i'll see you soon